Players of South Asian heritage make up about 30% of recreational cricketers in the UK. However, only 4% make up the pool of professionals. When you play at a certain level, a school level, especially in Birmingham, then that, there was an element of uh, prejudice. You obviously moved from Derbyshire to Leicestershire, presumably to get more game time. Played a few first class games there, took my first class hat trick there, which was good. But obviously, my career at Leicester was cut short. That disparity translates to the stands, too, where we see dwindling numbers from black, Asian or minority ethnic backgrounds. It was a family day out. Yeah. We'd be taking food, we'd be taking drink. I went to cricket watching games like that, then I find out my dad wasn't going to go to any games and watch cricket, so then thought I wouldn't go cricket. Recently, the ECB announced their action plan to change the way it interacts with these communities. The board have implemented a Rooney rule for all coaching roles, meaning at least one applicant from BAME backgrounds will be interviewed for jobs in the future. But will that make a difference? There are only a handful of black cricketers in county cricket, so we've come to Handsworth Cricket Club, the last remaining Caribbean club in Birmingham, to speak to some community members. Now we have to say welcome to Handsworth, you see? You see, the next amount of Dabino we have played, beautiful cricket, what a beautiful atmosphere. Handsworth is the place to be. Handsworth Cricket Club was formed from two Afro-Caribbean clubs in the late 60s merging together. Today, though, the club relies almost exclusively on Asian players to help field all three teams. Do you see kind of a next generation of, of kids coming through and just taking over where these guys are here? Nah. Indian kids, yes. Not, uh, not black kids. Not, not in Android anymore. I think Android, we have to cater for a different variety now. Not, uh, not Caribbean cricketers. I think that, that's the last of it. What you're looking at here is big people. Six. So we're finished. So the issue that we got with our young people, I think footballs seem to be more the sweetheart at the moment because there's more money, there's more stars. We were talking to people about the makeup of the of the youth set up here and how you're having to rely more on people from other backgrounds. You know, this is obviously a proud Caribbean club. We're here with all these. But it was never always region. set up to be only a Caribbean club. It's yeah. a it's about cricket in the park for young people of Birmingham. And Birmingham is very diverse. Mm -hmm. So it, for me, it's not only about Caribbean, it's about young people. Yeah. I think cricket in itself provides a good stability um, for young people going forward because it builds your character. What do you put that down to, the fact that it's gone from six or seven Caribbean clubs in the area to just one? Aging members um, and the fact that cricket a lot of those guys that were playing with the guys that immigrated from the West Indies, so cricket was in their blood, they were playing cricket. Obviously, as they got older, they couldn't, because there were no youngsters coming through with the affinity of cricket, then those clubs would sort of, would sort of die out. If a club like Handsworth Cricket Club are going to struggle to bring through the next generation of Caribbean players for their purposes, then what hope does first class or even international cricket with England have for showing that representation of Caribbean players? I guess with any minority group, it now just rests on the will of individuals. like here and other players here you reckon could go all the way? The standard is uh, quite high. I, I would say that a, a lot of these players can go on to play uh, Warwickshire League cricket and I, I don't know what goes wrong because if you look at Warwickshire's underage district teams, predominantly the players tend to be of a South Asian background. Mm -hmm. So I think the more interesting question is if they're good enough for the underage teams, how come they can't make that leap to the county team. Standard of cricket is surprisingly high, actually, if you consider that these are just players playing on a Sunday because it's the only free time they have. We're talking about a lot of these players operating at a level just below county level, and some of them are even first-class cricketers from overseas as well. Do you think Asian players are, are judged by a different standard then to, to say You know, players? I think what it is, you know, Asian players, if they underperform, they're scrutinised a bit more than white players. We need some of the coaches to perhaps look a little deeper into into Asian players and perhaps help them develop a bit more because I think the problem does come just at that development age when they get 16, 17, 18, when you know, they, they become adults. There's uh, a lot of cricketers out here. Do we ever get anyone coming? Like, like in football, you get scouts coming. Do you ever get any, anyone coming here? No. Does, does anyone come here? No, no. Very rarely. No. What do you think that's down to, that 
for the people on making the next start? It's really and truly it's down to them themselves on how hard they work. It's not about colour, racism, anything like that. It's all down to you. It all comes back down to do you chase uh, the game of cricket or do you earn a living? Because a lot of the people are from deprived areas. It's got nothing to do with race. It's got nothing to do with your skin colour or anything like that. I think that if people are going to start bringing that up, it's only to cause division. As the world's moved on, people here have moved on as well. And it's quite heartening actually to see that third, fourth generation of Asian cricket to say actually it's not down to race, it's about how much you put in, it's about family support, family support that is now forthcoming as well. So it's been quite eye-opening for me personally as well. We're in Nottingham to speak to left-arm quick bowler Atif Sheikh. Now Atif started his career at Derbyshire and then moved on to Leicestershire and also represented England at under-19 level. Currently though he's unattached and trying to work his way back into the game. Chief. How are you doing? How are you doing? Fish. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having us. So I have my, my first shirt that I've wore, a Derby shirt. This yellow one. This was 2010 when I first got signed. And my England shirt was for South Africa at Cape Town for the under-90s England. That must have been incredible to go from you know, just being an academy player and then just popping on an English shirt, yeah, as matter if it's under 19 or not. It definitely was. When I first got signed for Derby, I think the year after I got picked for the under 17s. So everything was happening so quick at that time. And I was only 17 and I got picked for under 19s. But um, from then I thought, you know what, I could actually play a bit of cricket, I can actually bowl. So what happened uh, at Leicester then, at the end of that 2016 season? At the Sri Lanka match, um, that was the fir only first team game I played. And the rest of the season I was playing second team. You're obviously trying to work your way back into the game now. How is that going? Yeah, it's going OK. Um, I've played a bit for Warwickshire this season. Hopefully, I need to just keep going and seeing how it goes. I'm still bowling well. Um, all I can do is just do what I can do and just hope for something yeah. to happen. Atif is able to bowl at speeds in excess of 90 miles an hour and appeared for England under-19s alongside the likes of England Test captain Joe Root and their star all-rounder Ben Stokes. So this was against Gloucestershire in 2014. Gidman was batting there, he was on 215 at art. And this was my hat-trick, my first first-class hat-trick. It was my second first-class match as well, so... Second first-class second match? Second first-class match, so it was nice to get it. I mean, to get our guy who's... It's got 200 anyway, that's yeah. pretty impressive. Are you frustrated as well that, like, there's a constant talk in English cricket about fast bowlers, left arm quicks, and here's one kind of twiddling his thumbs. Does that frustrate you at all? It's very frustrating, to be honest <laughs> with you. Um, I've heard it a lot, especially over the Ashes, um, how they need an, a quick bowler. When they mention a quick bowler, it's fine, but when they start mentioning they want a left arm bowler who can bowl quick. Were there any challenges you faced because of the fact that you're from an Asian background going through the system? I think with Asian people, I think people get it a bit mixed up with being chilled out, laid back, rather than being lazy. Because I used to get people calling me that, but I used to ask them, if one day you're telling me I can bowl 90 miles per hour, and the next day I'm lazy, I don't know how that works out. A lazy man can't bowl that fast. So the ETB have I've got this new scheme in terms of engaging, um, I suppose, Asian audiences, but also Asian coaches, Asian players. Um, you've been in the system for a while. How big an effect would that be to have more Asian coaches per se? Have you ever had an Asian coach? In the county level, I've never had an Asian coach. Even um, though you play for like Leicestershire, Derbyshire, even though I play for Leicester, with... Derbyshire, but there's quite a lot of Asians yeah. around there. I've never had an Asian coach, but it's, I think it would be a good idea for the for a players to have an Asian coach or an Asian <laughs> manager, or sort of you know advisor to speak to or something like that, because they can understand the player more. Um, there's a lot of Asians that don't feel that they can get out of their shell. If they have Asian coaches, it would it would definitely help.